Welcome to the show, Dr. David Klein of the Stages of Life Institute. They're right there in Longwood. I mean, just a hop, skip, and a yodel off of I-4. You cannot miss the great, great campus. And there's just about everything you would need right there at the Stages of Life, including that fabulous nutraceutical store. Dr. Let's talk about car accidents and what we do and what we don't do from the time that we feel that bang. What are some of the things we should be doing, one, to make sure that we're medically okay, but number two, that all the, all the sentences are right, that the T's are crossed, the I's are dotted for the follow-up legal matters? Well, those of you that are listening are mostly and largely old enough to have either been involved in a motor vehicle accident or know somebody that has been. And it works a little something like this. Okay, you're taking your life into your hands when you turn the key of your car, or these days pushing that button to get the thing started. And in all likelihood, if you drive long enough, live long enough, you are going to have a deceleration injury basically at the hands of somebody who is either cell texting, talking on the phone, looking the wrong way, or just basically not paying attention to what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then it starts a cascade of events. It, It starts this process that looks more akin to dominoes than about anything else, and it can get out of hand very, very quickly. And in fact, it's inevitable that it will get out of hand unless you know what to do in advance. So to some extent, it's like having your estate planned out. You know, when you're dead, it's a little bit too late to make your, you know, to do estate planning. We all kind of know that. Okay. Yet many people don't really care. But when it comes to motor vehicle accidents, it's far more likely than not that you're going to be alive and fighting this one out yourself. So you can't shrug your shoulders and go, okay, let the kids duke it out. You know, let, you know, survival to the fittest grand old strategy doesn't work here. So what do we do? The first thing that you need to understand is that the process is directed and dictated by the laws and statutes, the legality of the state where the accident occurs. So if you're in Georgia when you're hit, it's Georgia law. Okay, you're going to need Georgia representation if you need representation at all. But here in Florida, okay, the drivers here are not notoriously the very best. They're not notoriously the most skillful. And as it turns out, it's far more likely that you're going to get nailed in your pride pride and joy, your car, on your way to the grocery store. Okay, that's just the way these things work. So what's the first thing that you need to know? Well, you need to assess the circumstance. If you're tapped from behind by somebody doing five or six miles an hour, okay, you're going to assume, sometimes right, sometimes not so correctly, that there was no damage to you or your automobile. Well, I'm not going to get into the automobile mechanics. I'm not going to get into the structural difficulties with a five-mile-an-hour rear-end collision. But understand that if you are running at a dead run, a gallop, let's say, and you hit a wall, okay, that's a five- to six-mile-an-hour incident or less. Mm. might be as little as four miles an hour. Yet that would probably leave a mark. When you're struck by another vehicle going as little as four miles an hour. That's a that's a one mile, you know, what do you call it? A, a four mile minute, those people that are running, right? Okay, that you're going to end up with some structural damage from you. Well, back in the 70s, we had to start wearing seat belts and we had to put these headrests on, which made it far less likely that we were going to suffer from extension injuries of the neck. But it didn't stop us from the flexion injuries. So the first thing that you need to know is that when you're hit, when you, when, if you hit somebody else that's the same thing, you need to look yourself over. Make sure that you haven't broken anything. Make sure that you can feel your fingers and toes. If you can, you need to make a decision whether to go to the emergency room by way of the meat wagon, drive yourself to the ER. Either way, you're taking your life into your hands under many circumstances, or whether or not you need that type of immediate medical condition at all. But in the state of Florida, You need to seek medical attention within a 14-day period, or you may lose your rights to file for damages. That's with your insurance or anybody else's. Mm -hmm. So it's terribly, terribly important to be seen by somebody. And that somebody isn't an advertised referral agency. Okay, you need to know the trap. This is a Chinese finger uh, handcuff here. You know, you stick your fingers in, you don't quite get out. When you when you get uh, to one of these referral agencies, what happens is it's a star chamber of referrals to cousins, to you know, owners, this, that, or the other. But these are people that are exchanging, let's just say, referral fees in return for your 
business. Mm. These are not friendly people. They are certainly not looking out for quality. What they are looking out for is return on investment. So it's up to you to decide what direction to take. Now, it costs no more, not a penny more, to be seen by a physician than it does to be seen by a chiropractor. Yet that mm. first visit makes a huge difference with regards to how believable your, your case is going to be, how well you do for that matter, okay, and how it ends up in the two or three years it may take to settle the case out. If you go to a chiropractor first, you can expect to lose your $10,000 personal injury coverage to getting your neck strapped, uh, your, you know, having hot pr uh, compresses put on, but there's very little more mm. that can be done. If you go by the referral agency straight to their MRI units, there's a $1,500 MRI that if you paid cash would cost you 280 you, you have a limited amount of resources at your disposal and you have to use them wisely. So my advice is find somebody with an MD or DO after their name, see them the next day, that day, two or three days later, but certainly no more than a week later, with your accident report in hand. If you have your accident report in hand, it decreases the likelihood that somebody is going to make a clerical mistake. In other words, what was the date and time of injury, what type of car you were driving, how fast everybody was going, so on and so forth. Because these records get picked apart. In court, they get picked apart by the insurance adjusters. And one simple step on your part, one little thing that you can do that is going to save you all manners of grief down uh, downstream is to get that accident report and deliver it to every physician, every associate, and every healthcare delivery system that you go to because everybody has to be on board with this. So if you go to the emergency room, you're certainly not going to have the accident report in hand. But when you make it to the orthopedic surgeon, when you make it to the pain doc, when you make it to the physical medicine rehab doc, or even your family physician is perfectly capable of handling this, you need to make sure that at the earliest date to get this accident report, because a good adjuster, a good defense attorney is going to pick everybody apart hmm. if there's a single typographical error or a misunderstanding involved. Now. When you talk about going to the doctor within 14 days, I'm sitting here as living, hurting proof that I was holding my neck after my accident, and yes, there was some discomfort. But when I talked to you, you said, you don't have any discomfort yet like you're going to have four days from now. How did you know that? Because I've done this for 35 <laughs> years, okay? It works a little something like this. You know, you go ahead and you, and you tap somebody, you hurt them, you injure them. It takes time for swelling to occur. Okay, and that's just the way these things work. If you were slugged in the eye, you know, initially, you know that you know you got hurt. Okay, you might see a little bit of purple, but it's the next day that you see that your face gets puffed out. Very, very frequently, it takes uh, time even for the x-rays to turn positive with certain fractures because the bones have to separate with a little bit of edema in order for it to become obvious. So it's not at all uncommon for these small fra uh, facial fractures, these small uh, facet injuries to become apparent by x-ray, MRI, or anything else until a day or two down line. Now, with neck injuries in particular, very frequently people don't feel it until the next day or two or three days following that. And that's mm. when the fecal material hits the fan. Why? Okay. It just, it's a simple fact of life that it takes time for things to wind up. So when you go to the emergency room immediately after the injury, if you know you haven't broken anything, you're not really going to use your money very, very wisely. Right. Best bet, okay, is to fill out the police report. Keep an eye on yourself. If you have loss of consciousness, you do go to the emergency room. If you see blood gushing, that's a good idea to go to the emergency room. If you have a laceration, go to the emergency room. And certainly if your knee is bent the wrong way, it Ooh. might be a good idea to have somebody get a glance at it. But otherwise, okay, you can make it until the next day or the day after that and see your family doctor. You mm -hmm. see somebody who knows what they're doing. You know, I've been in the, in the witness stand doing these things almost a thousand times. OK, and one of the biggest mistakes that gets uh, made by the person that's being injured is by not getting their ducks in a row early in the game. You have got to get that accident report. You've got to get the x-ray reports if there are any. And oddly, your uh, your history, your medical records are essential to this in order to demonstrate whether or not you're injured. OK, because mm -hmm. the question then becomes, is it a de novo injury? Is it something new? Is it an, a re-exacerbation of an old injury, or is it a worsening of an old injury? All of which, oddly, are compensable under the, under the laws of Florida. 
But wow. you have to have this information up front because if you don't, an attorney, the defense attorney, and these are nice people uh, when you're out socially with them, but they turn into gremlins when you're at, you know, at deposition. They will pick you apart. Your doctor cannot be laid up like a like a like a a, a basketball. You've got to get this data to them up front and early. And by all means, first and foremost, do not go to one of these referral services because mm. this really is is low lying fruit. These are this is for people that don't listen to talk radio. These are for <laughs> these are for people that are more interested in getting a good. Uh, brand on the six pack than they are about doing much else. And of course, uh, speaking personally, after an accident, there are some things that you can get that are prescription. I get that. But there are also some things you can get at the nutraceutical store. But first, Robin, we can't go to the nutraceutical store until we know where it is. Well, that is correct. And our nutraceutical store is located in our office, which is in Longwood at 1917 Booth Circle. That's right off of I-4 and 434. Our phone number is 407-679-3337 and our website is stagesoflife.net. If you can't make it in, you can go on our website and you can purchase your nutraceuticals right there and we will ship them to you. We're also on Facebook at Stages of Life Medical Institute.